Welcome to the Mesa City Council meeting. Thank you for your interest in the City of Mesa. If you would like to speak on an item or provide comment, please fill out the form at mesaaz.gov slash blue card. Please limit your comments to three minutes. You can also ask for an item to be removed from the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are read into the record and voted on in one motion. At the end of tonight's meeting, under items from citizens present, there will be an opportunity for three citizens to speak on any issue for a maximum of three minutes each. The council cannot respond to your comments. The city of Mesa operates under a council district system with the mayor elected at large. The mayor of Mesa is John Giles. There are six districts in Mesa, and here are your elected council members. In District 1, Mark Freeman represents Northwest Mesa. In District 2, Jeremy Whitaker represents Central and South Central Mesa. In District 3, Francisco Heredia represents Southwest Mesa and the area south of downtown. In District 4, Jen Duff represents Downtown Mesa. In District 5, David Luna represents Northeast Mesa. And in District 6, Kevin Thompson represents Southeast Mesa. Information about your council member and the City of Mesa is available on mesaaz.gov. All City Council meetings are broadcast live and then rebroadcast on Mesa 11 and on mesa11.com. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Uh, we'll begin, and again, I'd like to welcome everyone to the April 6th regular City Council meeting. Uh, we'll begin our meeting with a roll call because we are uh, participating uh, via technology due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and our uh, efforts to be physically distant. Uh, Mr. Freeman, are you present? Present, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Whitaker. Present. Thank you. Mr. Heredia. Present. Thank you. Ms. Duff. Present. Thank you, Mr. Luna. Present, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Present. Thank you, all of our council is present. Uh, as is our tradition, we're going to begin this meeting with a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So I would invite uh, everyone to please stand and remain standing following the moment of silence for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, again, during the moment of silence, I would just encourage all of us to, you know, through our whatever our own faith trad tradition or non-faith tradition is to, to remember um, the unique situation, the uh, rather compelling and epic situation we're in as a city and as a, as, as a, as a global community. So uh, please uh, use this uh, time to be thoughtful and pe to petition for uh, assistance to the challenges that we're all facing as a community. So please stand and remain standing. Thank you. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the first item on our agenda for this meeting is awards, recognitions, and announcements. Uh, tonight we have one proclamation uh, on the awards and recognitions agenda. Uh, agenda. I'm proud. Uh, let me. I do have a proclamation. Unfortunately, we're not able to physically hand it to those uh, who are receiving it, but uh, we'll do it uh, electronically. Uh, I'm proud to proclaim April the 11th through 17th as the week of the young child in Mesa, Arizona. This week celebrates young minds and recognizes the efforts of teachers and local organizations like First Things First in conjunction with the National Association for the Education of Young Children. I'd like to thank everyone who plays a role in providing a foundation for learning for children in Mesa and for all the parents out there who are taking a larger role in their children's education right now, thank you your children will be better for it. Uh, next, uh, I want to recognize businesses and organizations that have gone above and beyond to assist in our response to the coronavirus. Tonight, I have a certificate for the Flying Samaritans. 
there's their certificate. Uh, the Flying Samaritan is, is our great organization that I've been pleased to get to know uh, just the last couple of weeks. Uh, they uh, reached out and provided the city of Mesa access to, to several thousand masks for our first responders. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm anxious to drop this uh, certificate by and we really appreciate the, that that's a, quite a significant contribution to our community. Uh, also, there's, uh, as I know we all have, have seen many, many examples of businesses and individuals that have stepped up at this time to provide uh, really amazing service in our community. Uh, I want to mention just a couple of them, and, and I think over the next few weeks we'll, we'll try to take advantage of, of doing this as much as we can. But uh, I know we're all aware that the United Food Bank uh, has responded incredibly to the increase in need uh, over, over the last few weeks. In a matter of weeks, they have quadrupled their Help Yourself program. They've changed locations, converted to a drive-through, and implemented both physical distancing and sanitation guidelines so that they are now uh, each week uh, serving over 2,000 uh, individuals with, uh, with food boxes. Also, uh, our, our For Our City organization uh, has taken the lead on working with the, the city to implement the new Adopt-A-Grandparent program. The goal of this program is to match vetted volunteers with disconnected seniors in our community that may need food or supplies or prescriptions picked up or simply someone to talk to. Um, uh, so again, thank you very much to Pastor Paul Anderson, Pastor Luis Amaya, and others who have really uh, extended tremendous amounts of service to, uh, to uh, disconnected seniors, uh, and many of them are now staying home rather than being forced out into the public. I'd invite the council, you and, and the public, if you know of a business or, organ or an organization that you think deserves recognition for their response to the coronavirus pandemic, please send me an email at, mesa at or mayor at mesaz.gov because we'd really like to recognize them here at our city council meetings and send them a certificate of appreciation. Um, the next item on our agenda for this meeting uh, is to consider our consent agenda. Uh, so I would invite Mr. Kevin Christopher to read the consent agenda to us at this time. Considered as a separate item. Item two on the consent agenda, approval minutes of previous meetings as written. Items 3A through 3D, Act on Liquor License Applications for Pizza Hut, 2056 East Baseline Road, 1901 West Main Street, 6017 East McAllops Road, and 2727 East McAllops Road. Item 3E, Act on Liquor License Application for Family Dollar, 550 North Country Club Drive. Item 3F, Act on Liquor License Application for Hilton Mesa, 711 West Holmes Avenue. Item 3G, Act on Liquor License Application for Doroma, 1116 South Dobson Road. Item 3H, Act on Liquor License Application for Divine Wine Bar and Bistro, 2837 North Power Road. Item 3I, Act on Liquor License Application for Cabaret, 142 West Main Street. Item 4A, Act on 10-month term contract with four one-year renewal options for store truck parks and services for the Fleet Services Department. Item 4B, act on one-year renewal with a one-year renewal option through the term contract for mechanical fittings for the materials and supply warehouse for the energy resources department. Item 4C, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for a noteless service risers for the materials and supply warehouse for the energy resources department. Item 4D, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for traffic signal meter pedestals for the materials and supply warehouse for the transportation department. Item 4E, act on one-year renewal with a one-year renewal option with a term contract for heavy-duty ballistic body armor for the police department. Item 4F, act on contracts to purchase an MVAC system and related validation supplies for DNA processing for the police department. This purchase is grant funded by the U.S. Department of Justice, DNA backlog reduction funds. Item 4G, act on one-year term contract with four years renewal options for industrial, building, plumbing, electrical, and HVAC materials for citywide departments. Item 4A, check on contract to purchase an automatic call distribution interactive voice response system for various citywide departments as requested by the Innovation and Technology Department. Item 4I, act on three-year term contract with two years renewal options for scheduled and emergency response electric line crew services for the Energy Resources Department. Item 4J, act on five-year term contract with two years of renewal options for water, wastewater inspection, and assessment services for the Water Resources Department. 
Item 4K, I got a three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for storm drain grates and manhole covers for the Transportation Department. Item 4L, I got a three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for traffic signal controller cabinets for the Transportation Department. Item 4M, act on contract for water line and gas line replacement project, Phase 1 Main Street and Crisman Road. This project funded by 2014 authorized water bonds. Item 4N, act on one-year term contract with two years of renewal options for two master job order contracts for mechanical and plumbing construction services. Item 4O, act on one-year term contract with two years of renewal options for three master job order contracts for small tenant improvement services. Item 4P, act on one-year term contract with two years of renewal options for two master job order contracts for park and playground supply and installation services. Item 4Q, act on one-year term contract with two years of renewal options for two master job order contracts for electrical construction services. Item 5A, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the city of Tucson to accept grant funds under the East Valley Drug Enforcement Task Force Program to be used for overtime for the police department's organized crime section. Item 5B, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into a development agreement for city share reimbursement between Next Metro Enclave and the city for street improvements in a proposed residential development known as Avia Enclave, located at 8433 East Guadalupe Road. Item 5C, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into a development agreement for city share reimbursement between PPGN Ray and the city for street lighting and street improvements in a proposed residential development known as Cadence Gateway located at 5931 South Crisman Road. Item 5D, Act on Resolution Redesignating and Renewing the Existing Central Business District as required by Arizona Revised Statute 42-6209F. Item 5E, Act on Resolution Approving the Purchase of and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into contracts for the purchase of up to 15 megawatts of baseload electric power and associated energy for a term of up to three years and up to 10 megawatts of peak load electric power and associated energy for a period of up to two years. Item 5F, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into three separate intergovernmental agreements for the Flood Control District of Maricopa County for the construction, construction management, operation, and maintenance of drainage improvements. The Flood Control District will fund 75% of the project construction costs. The city will be responsible for funding the remaining costs. Item 6A, Introduction of Ordinance Regarding ZLN-19, Dash 00935. This is for property generally located east of Mesa Drive and south of US 60. Rezone and site plan review to establish the Metro East Valley planned area development and allow for an industrial development. Item 6B, introduction of ordinance running ZLN 19 00919 for property located on the southeast corner of University Drive and Sossman Road. Rezone to allow for development of a small lot single residence subdivision. Item 6C, Introduction of Ordinance amending Section 10-4-6 of the Mesa City Code to establish a speed limit of 30 miles per hour on Everton Terrace from Elliott Road to a point 2,290 feet south of Elliott Road, as recommended by the Transportation Advisory Board. Item 6D, Introduction of Ordinance regarding AMX 18-00788, annexing property located south of Elliott Road and west of Ellsworth Road and adopting comparable zoning. This was initiated by the applicant. Item 6E, Introduction of Ordinance regarding ANX 19-00420, annexing property located south of Elliott Road and west of Ellsworth Road and adopting comparable zoning. This was initiated by the applicant. Item 6F has been removed from the consent agenda. Item 6G, Introduction of Ordinance regarding ZLN 17-00607. This is property generally located on both sides of Loop 202, bounded by Elliott Road to the north, Warner Road to the south, Ellsworth Road to the east, and the 80th Street alignment to the west. Rezone of the planned area development overlay. This request will establish the Haas Crossing planned area development to guide the future review of specific plans of development. Item 7A, Act on Ordinance regarding ZLN 19-00651. This is for property located north of Brown Road and east of Greenfield Road. A rezone to allow for development of a single residence subdivision. Items 8A through 8D pertain to property located at the northwest corner of Thomas and Wrecker Roads. These items are for continuance to the April 20th City Council meeting. Item 9A, Act on Subdivision Plant to Point 2, located north of Point 22 Boulevard on the west side of Signal Butte Road. Mayor and Council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you very much, Mr. Christopher. Uh, Ms. Mickelson, I know in our study session you indicated that the public had requested that item 6F be removed from the consent agenda, and it was. 
Uh, since then, have we re received any other requests to remove an item from the consent agenda? No additional requests, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have, I, I think council and, and the public, we were a little nervous about how we were gonna uh, transition to an all electronic uh, study session or a council meeting, worried that the public wasn't gonna figure out how to participate in the meeting. I have to tell you, those fears were not well-founded because we have, I think, a record number of, of uh, citizen comments uh, related to our agenda today. So, uh, Ms. Mickelson, you have uh, several comments on different agenda items that are on the consent agenda that have been submitted to you electronically. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so prior to voting on the uh, consent agenda, I'm going to ask Ms. Mickelson to read those comments uh, and then at the conclusion of that, uh, those, her reading those comments, I'll ask the council for a motion to proceed with the consent agenda. Okay, um, on item 6C, the um, uh, request was submitted by Erin Young, who did not wish me to read her comments, but wanted to indicate she was opposed to this item. On item 6D through G, um, as well as 10A, these speakers submitted requests for all of those items. Um, these speakers did not want their comments read, but they want to indicate support for those items. Their names are Aubrey Thomas, Cassandra Wood, Don Cartier, Stephanie Schweitzer, Jackie Cochran, Cheryl Harper, and David Vermillion. Um, also, we received one late for Mark Ibsen to indicate support for those items. We also, request, we also received requests for the same agenda items. These speakers did want their comments um, read out loud, so I will read those. Some are short, some are not. The first speaker, Doug Prante, uh, he indicated, I support the rezoning efforts put forth in the plan. The second one, Jordan Cab Tr Crabtree, I'm excited to live stream this meeting and fully support Haas Crossing. Next one is Brenda Hunsacker. She indicated that she'll be watching the meeting and she wanted to express her total support for the Haas Crossing. This has been a long time coming and so many advantages to the city as well as the citizens. There are so many people excited by this project and the improvements that it will make. The revenue to the city and the air quality to the people living nearby is huge. No more manure fires, manure stench, et cetera. Next speaker is Jean and Laura Bateman. We've been residents of Sonoran Springs near Sossaman and Elliott community for the past six years, and we fully support the rezoning of Haas Crossing. We believe the rezoning will only benefit our community. The rezoning will bring more jobs, restaurants, services, and activities that we desire for our community. It will help to rid the community of the eyesores of old equipment and deteriorating landscape. We are aware that the group of farm owners have worked hard with the city of Mesa to design a plan that fits into the city's general plan, general plan brings value and beauty to our community. Next speaker is Linda Rooley. I will be watching the live, live stream. Please let council know I support Haas Crossing. Kathy Grissom, I fully support the Haas Crossing project and will be watching the live stream. Um, Paul Perez didn't indicate comments, but he supports this item. Billy Maynard, hi, uh, you can count me in full support of Haas Crossing as a lifetime resident of the Mesa area. That's 81 years. I have seen many changes. The zoning change is a game changer for Mesa, a huge plus for everyone, a total win-win. In my mind, it doesn't make any sense to not support. So there again, I will state my full and total support for Haas Crossing, and I'm asking you to please support Haas Crossing. Todd Grissom, I will be watching the live stream. I fully support Haas Crossing. Alexandra Boyle, I am a resident of Mesa and will be watching the live stream. This evening, I strongly support the Haas Crossing rezoning project. The project has been delayed for far too long, much to the detriment of the city of Mesa, local residents and landowners. I truly hope that the city of Mesa will affirm that it is a forward thinking and pro-business by rezoning the land in Haas Crossing without further delay. It has been very frustrating to watch Representative Thompson actively oppose and willfully misrepresent a project that would benefit his own district and the city at large. Please vote in favor. James Hunsacker, I'm in full support of Haas Crossing. As a lifetime resident of the area and allergy sufferer, I long for fresh air. I am also exciting about all the great and many added benefits this will bring to the area. 
live work environment. This can't happen fast enough for me. Please support Haas Crossing. Thank you, James Hunsacker. Shelby Grissom, I'll be live streaming and would like for the council to know that I am in support of Haas Crossing. Um, Jacob uh, Rjlarsdam, sorry, I butchered your name, um, is in support of the project. There are no comments. Um, Jordan Rose um, is the applicant and he'll be on the phone to answer any questions if council has any questions. Um, Peter Benrin um, is in support of the project. He'll be watching and would like the council to know that he's 100% in 100% support of Haas Crossing. Jim Boyle, I fully support Haas Crossing. Nora Maynard, I stand behind the Haas Crossing. I would like to ask you to please vote in favor of passing Haas Crossing. This would be a big plus for this area which is in desperate need of a change. The economic impact to the area would be big, plus the environmental air quality would be a great improvement. It's time to get this done. I'm asking again, please stand for the passing of Hawes Crossing. Tony Bianchi, the representative, um, just wanted to indicate the airport, airport's response letter has been submitted prior. The airport's requested case conditions have been incorporated and he's taking part via telephone if airport related questions are raised. Christian Clausen would like for council to know, I am in support of Haas Crossing. I was born and raised in the area and I believe it would be a great addition to the community. JC Michelle Grissom, I'm in full support of Haas Crossing. I'm excited to see all the new and added benefits it will bring to the area for my family. Logan Salcedo, I truly believe it will be a great addition to the East Valley. Barbara Boyle, I support Haas Crossing. This will be an asset for Mesa and the surrounding area. Jason Barney, approve Haas Crossing. The inner loop could be the crown jewel of the Gateway region. Instead, current zoning, lack of infrastructure, and dairies are perpetuating stagnant blight at the front door to Gateway. Including residential will unleash market resources and will transform the inner loop to the higher end jobs we've always envisioned. Protecting the airport is essential. However, rather than harming the airport, approval will transform the inner loop into powerhouse of economic activity, job creation, and high-end development. For more detail, he references a website, jasonbarney.com. Brenna, sorry, I will be watching the live stream and would like the council to know I support Haas Crossing. Joel, sorry, I will be watching the live stream and support Haas Crossing. Uh, John Hartman. Approval of the Haas Crossing project is critical to, to Mesa's future. We need this approved so that the uses that are no longer compatible with the area can give way to the proposed multi-use development, allowing for residential, commercial, and industrial uses to coexist in this area is what will make the overall project successful and will provide great economic and employment opportunities going forward. I will be watching the live stream tonight and fully support the Haas Crossing project. I ask council to support this project to help revitalize this area. Um, Vikas Patel, I support Haas Crossing and will be watching the live stream. The dairy farmers have made as many concessions as reasonably possible to make this plan work and the residents of Mesa want Haas Crossing, not data centers or other industrial space. The Haas Crossing plan will do a lot more for Mesa than any other alternative and it's something that Mesa needs in order to keep up with other Valley cities. Give me one moment and we have more. These are these comments are for item seven A. Um, they these um, these speakers wanted their comments read. Um, Adam Baugh, um, well, he's the applicant and he only wanted to speak if this is item is removed from consent. Um, Skip Thompson supports this. I like that this site will be developed and think that 36 homes will be great. Glad to see that they are single family homes and not apartments. I think this will be great. Chet Welch, I fully support this case. I have coached my son's youth soccer team for several years at Princess Park, which shares a property line with this site. I love this park, but the very large vacant area to the east attracts some scary individuals after dark. Due to this and the fact that the park is not well lit, 
Some parents have expressed concerns about having their kids in the park after dark. Allowing this property to be developed as currently proposed will only further enhance Princess Park as an excellent family-oriented oriented facility, as well as bring in additional families to the community. Uh, Ernest Tenriquez, I'm excited to see this new development happen as currently proposed. I have seen the layout on the homes that the builder is proposing and think that it is a great fit for this location. Dirk Burr, I have absolutely no objections to what is being proposed. I have visited one of the developers, other communities, and was extremely impressed. I think this will be a great addition to our neighborhood. Wyatt Frost, I want my voice... I want to voice my full support for this development. This parcel has sat vacant for too long and has become a complete eyesore over time. I think that these 36 homes will be just what we need to help revitalize the neighborhood. Chris Tucker, I am looking forward to new neighbors and expanding our local neighborhood community. Robert Cochran, I think he just wanted to indicate support for this item. Um, George Bach wanted to indicate support. Max Ganley, I support this new subdivision and think it will be a great addition to our neighborhood. Tom Gibson, the proposed subdivision is a great use for this land that has sat vacant for far too long. I voice my full support. The remaining items I have is are for 6F and item 10, which are off consent. Hey, thank you, Ms. Mickelson. Uh, and again, just uh, to rehearse what we just heard, those are all uh, comments on items that are on the consent agenda. Correct. Council, is there a motion? Is there a motion for the approval of the consent agenda? Thank you, Mr. Freeman is making that motion. Uh, Ms. Duff, are you making a second for that motion? Yes, I'm making a second. Thank you, Council. Any comments? Okay, well, we're going to do a roll call vote. Um, uh, I vote aye. Uh, Mr. Freeman from District 1. I vote aye as well. Thank you. Mr. Whitaker. Aye. Mr. Heredia. Aye. Uh, Ms. Duff. Aye. Uh, Mr. Luna. Aye. Mr. Thompson. Aye. Thank you. The consent agenda passes unanimously. Uh, the first item we have off of the consent agenda is item 6F. Uh, again, this is uh, setting a hearing for two weeks from today, April the 20th, on this item. Uh, I, it, I won't read the entire item, but it uh, has to do with the Haas Crossing uh, annexation. Uh, Jordan Rose is the applicant. I think we're very familiar with this, uh, with this item. We do have, uh, this was taken off of the consent agenda because a member of the public uh, indicated that they were asked to have it pulled off and to, to and so as a result of that we'll now uh, hear that person's comments and any other comments that have been submitted so Ms. Mickelson will you please read whatever comments you have there relative to agenda item 6f sure um, I have comments in opposition to 6f Carrie Davis I'm strongly opposed to the rezoning of ZON 17-00606 the proposed rezoning is not compatible with the existing RS6 zone for Boulder Creek. The majority of the 109 acres to be rezoned north of Elliott between Hawes and 80th is more than twice the density of the existing BC neighborhood. This design does not preserve, preserve the quality of life for the Boulder Creek community. The increased traffic with higher density zoning will likely raise the level of risk for the children attending the Boulder Creek Elementary School. The 109 acres should be rezoned RS6 to be consistent with BC community. Dale Clough in opposition, I do not approve of the rezoning as planned. I believe it will not provide any needed support for the, so for the surrounding communities. It will, however, increase traffic and add clutter to the quietness and privacy of the area and the Boulder Creek community. As such, it will increase the safety of the elementary age school children as well as the community. It will have a very negative impact on the existing Boulder Creek homeowners, I am home values. To be compatible and consistent with the neighboring communities, please rezone as RS6. Um, Alan Haney, I am strongly opposed to the rezoning of ZON 17606. The proposed rezoning is not compatible with the existing RS6 zone for Boulder Creek. The majority of the 109 acres to be rezoned north of Elliott between 
Haas and 80th is more than twice the density of the existing BC neighborhood. This design does not preserve the quality of life of the BC community. The increased traffic with higher density zoning will likely raise the level of risk for the children attending the BC elementary school. The 109 acres should be rezoned RS6 to be consistent with the BC community. Dennis Bremhall, I am strongly opposed to the rezoning of ZON 17606. The proposed rezoning is not compatible with the existing RS6 zone for Boulder Creek. The majority of the 109 acres to be rezoned north of Elliott between Haas and 80th is more than twice the density of the existing BC neighborhood. The design does not preserve the quality of life of the BC community. The increased traffic with higher density zoning will likely raise the level of risk for the children attending the BC elementary school. The 190 acres should be rezoned RS6 to be consistent with the BC community. The next comment is from Kevin Milne, who is basically the same comments as Dennis Brimhall. Did you want me to read that again? Uh, so it's verbatim for the, the yes. previous statement, is that right? That's correct. Uh, I think you can just, um, as you've noted, indicate that that person joins in the, in the same statement, correct? Correct, okay, that works. Um, and that's all I have for 6F. Okay, thank you. Again, just to rehearse council, this is, uh, we're not voting on the merits of this zoning case. This is a procedural vote setting uh, this for a hearing uh, two weeks from today on April the 20th. Is there any council discussion of this item before we vote? Okay, is there a motion for approval? Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Is there a second? Thank you, Mr. Luna. Uh, we'll now do a roll call vote on agenda item 6F. Uh, I vote uh, aye. Mr. Freeman. Aye. Mr. Whitaker. Aye. Mr. Heredia. Aye. Ms. Duff. Aye. Mr. Luna. Aye. Mr. Thompson. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda, let me pull it up. Excuse me, is agenda item 10. Uh, this is the public hearing prior to the release of the petition for annexation case 18-00788 for approximately 320 acres of land located south of Elliott Road and west of, Elliott, uh, west of Ellsworth Road. I declare the public hearing open. Uh, Ms. Mickelson, does any, has anyone requested to speak on this item from the public? Yes, I have a number of um, requests um, to have their comments read. Uh, well, I think most of these actually do not want their comments read, but I have a number of people who um, submitted um, speaker cards um, in support of this item. Uh, would you go ahead and read those comments if they wish they, that they've, uh, has anyone, any of those comments requested to be read during this uh, public hearing? No. No. Have any of them requested that their names be identified in support of the item? Um, no. The applicant is on the phone with any questions. Sean Lake is on the phone if you have any questions. Otherwise, they're all in support and I can read their names. Okay. All right. No, so you, you have that. Well, why don't you just tell us how many comments you have uh, in support of this item? Put that on there. Yeah, 10. I'm sorry, Mayor. We're having a converse, private conversation here in Chambers. Um, I'll go ahead and read those to you. Um, Mark Gaspers, um, Greg Guglielm, I don't know how to say it. And, uh, Greg G, I'm sorry, I, I will butcher his name. I can't even pronounce it. Marla Flanagan. Uh, Ms. Mickelson, before you go forward, Mr. Gaspers, uh, did he indicate that he was for or against the item? Um, he opposed, I'm sorry, he does oppose that item, and then the rest of the speakers are in support of that item. And Mr. Okay. Gaspers indicated that he would um, be, he would call in on the 20th when council considers this item. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then, um, um, so then Greg Guglielm, Google Mino, he supports this item. Marla Flanagan supports this item. Natal Patel supports this item. Peter Van Ryn supports. Jody Van Ryn in support. Courtney Everhart in support. Chatal Patel in support. Tia Cook in support. And Brenna Sari in support. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, do any council uh, do any council members wish to address this item? Okay, seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Uh, again, there's no action on this item for this meeting. Uh, this annexation will come back to the council on the a April 20th meeting for action. Uh, the next item on our agenda for this meeting is item 11, items from citizens present. Um, Ms. Mickelson, has anyone requested to have a statement read during this portion of the meeting? No, there are no requests, Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes the items, I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson. Mayor, if I may, I, I forgot to do this during study session, but I wanted to recognize that April is Autism Awareness Month, and uh, we are an autism-friendly um, city, so I wanted to make sure that we uh, gave a shout-out. Thank you um, very much. And it, Council, any other uh, items before we adjourn this meeting? Okay, uh, again, we don't need to do a roll call for adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? See, I'll Mr. Move. Freeman said so, uh, made that motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 By unanimous aye. consent, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Sean Lake submitted a...